Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, if I could choose only one work by Composer X, it would have to be Work M. And today, Composer X is none other than Sergei Rachmaninoff. Yeah, Rachmaninoff and the work in question. Well, that's kind of an interesting thing, isn't it? You've made many suggestions. Rachmaninoff is just one of those enormously popular composers whose, whose general recognition and, and acclaim really is kind of outsized given what he wrote. I mean, I, I just think that. It's not that he doesn't deserve it. The music is gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. But when you think about it, uh, you know, he only wrote, what, three symphonies and four piano concertos and a couple other orchestral works and a lot of solo piano music, most of which is actually not well known or as well known as it could be. The Etude Tableau and the Sonatas are sort of iffy. You know, which version do you use and what that, you know, he struggled with, you know, works in larger forms, a few chamber works, some choral music. He wrote a bunch of little operas. No one performs them. But still, when you see Rachmaninoff, he's so popular. And he's popular based on just a handful of works, one of which we're going to be talking about momentarily. So what did you tell me you thought the choice should be that we present to the evil god Cancrazans as the only one work that should survive the coming classical music apocalypse? Well, what really interested me was that none of you suggested that it should be a symphony. And I, I thought that was kind of cool because personally, the first symphony is amazing. A bunch of you suggested the bells, um, which is a very, very strong possibility because it's arguably Rachmaninoff's greatest major concert work. It's, it's a masterpiece and it's totally characteristic. Because remember, the idea here is not the most popular or his greatest work necessarily, but it should be the most characteristic work the one that really reveals who he was as a composer. And and so there was that. And a bunch of you, of course, suggested piano concertos. However, Jed suggested, and you know, Jed Distler, the amazing classicstoday.com and elsewhere, Gramophone and you know, in the universe at large, the universe's piano critic, that's what he is. Um, he suggested, and I totally agree, and a bunch of you suggested too, it has to be the Paganini Rhapsody. The Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini. It's a late work, um, a summation in some ways of Rachmaninoff's writing for piano and orchestra. He was a keyboard virtuoso, a piano guy. So we have to pick something that has piano in it. Now, you know, we've done this a bunch of times. Most composers were keyboard people. They, they all played a keyboard instrument. Many of them composed at the keyboard. There are very few composers who were not piano people. Even the ones who were violinists or, or string players played the piano. I mean, it was an essential adjunct. But Rachmaninoff was a real pianist. I mean, a soloist, a, a virtuoso touring piano guy. And his writing for piano is extraordinary and very, very characteristic. So we have to have something with a piano in it. But he was also a major composer. I mean, in terms of being a real, authentic, genuine, not just piano virtuoso. I mean, he did write symphonies and the bells and the symphonic dances, which a bunch of you also chose. Oh, what a gorgeous work that is. Very, very great work that sort of charts new paths. But the Paganini Rhapsody does all of that, and it has the piano. And it's one of the greatest theme and variation works in existence. And it is... It has the DS Irae in it, which you have to have if, it's, if you're picking Rachmaninoff. I mean, you've got to, because everything he wrote has the DS Irae chant in it. You know, do, 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 do. Yeah, it's right in there um, underneath one of the variations. And at the very end, um, it's just an amazing piece. And it has the 18th variation, that unbelievable melody, which is one of the reasons why Rachmaninoff has his outsized reputation because he created a few of the greatest tunes in the history of Western civilization. And when you can write some of the greatest tunes in the history of Western civilization, it doesn't matter how shabby you may be formally or how, 
how unpopular some of your other things are or how small your output may be. If you've got the tunes, you're, 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 you're in. That's, that's, all, that's all that most people need. And it's rather interesting. And of course, that infuriates like musicologists and people who try and tell us that other composers should be even more famous because they're so formally ingenious or harmonically sophisticated or because like Elliot Carter, they could prepare enormous thematic, not thematic, but harmonic and other charts with, you know, inverse retrograde you know, rhythmic augmentation things and multiple things with ensembles from all over the place, all doing simultaneous atonal things once in the audience. It may be just unbelievably ingenious, but it doesn't have the tunes. And Rachmaninoff had the tunes. The greatest Rachmaninoff story, by the way, um, that I ever heard was the comment that George Crumb made, which just confirms what I just said when we were at at the uh, BDEB convention at the Cod Classical Awards when he was getting a Lifetime Achievement Award. And all of the, and I've said, told you this story before, but it's such a great story that all these avant-gardists are standing around him um, because he was you know, an icon in the avant-garde music community saying things like, you know, who do you listen to? Who are you listening to? What do you think of? I remember one kid was like, what do you think of Salvatore Sciarino? I think it's just an awful composer, but that's another issue. But, you know, and they're just throwing out names, you know, Mauricio Cagle and Stockhausen and, you know, the usual Darmstadt culprits and all those people. And and Crumb is just sitting there at the dinner table. He looks at these kids and he says, well, he says, with this slight West Virginia accent, he says, I think Rachmaninoff wrote some really beautiful tunes. Don't you? <laughs> and they all were just like, ah, that's it. You got the tunes, and so the choice goes to the Paganini Rhapsody. It's got the tunes, and it's got everything else. And that's what matters. And I think the great god Cancrasans will adore the Paganini Rhapsody. Well, he's a god. He already knows it. But, you know, it has to be, he, he knows everything. So we need to sort of whittle down what he knows. We have to direct his attention, I think is what we're talking about. And, of course, we all love it, too. So there you go. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.